Jupiter. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right, so today we're going to be presenting on our project called Space Camp, which is temperature control in orbit around Jupiter. And our objective in this project was to design a control system that would regulate the temperature of a spaceship. And the way that we did this was to model heat transfer of space and solar radiation to the exterior of the spaceship. And we regulated this temperature through coolant flow through two different loops. And one of the loops was around the engine block and was modeled as a jacketed coolant reactor. And the second was around the spaceship body uh, and it just flows all around the exterior of that surface labeled as TS1. And we approximated this spaceship as a cylinder made out of carbon nanotubes. In order to get our transfer functions and in order to model this system, we used a uh, series of energy balances. The first one is shown here. This is the energy ba balance around surface one, which is the cer cylindrical surface around the spaceship. So as you can see here, we have a couple of terms. The first one is the accumulation term. This is this accounts for the change in temperature. The second one here, it it's talking about the radiation you get from the sun. Uh, we used a um, equation that we found that uh, gives a specific um, heat or ra radiance, irradiance from the sun, that's H naught, and you, we multiplied that by the area of the spaceship that's exposed to the sun, which is half of the surface area, so we have area over two. The next term that we used is a radiation term to take into account the radiation that was leaving our spaceship and going into space, into the cold depths of space. And this next term accounts for conduction between the two surfaces inside the ship, which are at different temperatures. Um, surface 1 takes into account radiation from space, and surface 2 takes into account radi er, heat, from the heat that it gets from the engine, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And this last term is a, uh, is a coolant term, so we have heat removed by the coolant, represented by um, Tc, which is the temperature of the coolant. So we use a similar kind of energy balance around the engine, and in order to model the, uh, or to get the transfer functions between the two surfaces that we had, we used a heated rod model, um, and so as you can see, we used we tried to do a couple different um, material, use a couple different materials in our step test. So one of them was steel, and you can see that it was obviously way more conductive than carbon fiber because, uh, well, just because of its properties. So when we did the step test, you can see that the the heat traveled much faster through the fi through the steel. So we chose carbon fiber to use in our spaceship so that it wouldn't absorb heat as much, so it would be a better, um, better choice for space travel. This next diagram shows the, uh, the block diagram that we used. Uh, the, fir the, top, the top of the block diagram right here, this is, this is the loop around, the, around surface 1, and this is the coolant loop around, coolant loop around surface, uh, surface 2. So we were trying to control these two, these two temperatures right here, temperature of surface two and temperature of surface one. So um, as you can see, we used uh, disturb uh, the surface from, from the sun. We used some uh, radiation there, but we also took into account um, disturbances f uh, that were between the two surfaces. So uh, the disturbance from uh, the coolant that was going around the engine came up here and was a disturbance into the first loop and the and the coolant running in the first loop became a disturbance for the second loop, and we also use feed forward controllers, which are shown in order to, uh, to in order to account for these. Okay, great. So here's a the slides about our results. Um, we actually were able to do a lot better than we even thought we were going to be able to. Um, so the first thing that we did is we wanted to know how long it would take to orbit Jupiter. So we use this equation here on the top. Um, and it shows you that you can calculate basically how long it will take to orbit Jupiter, which we found to be um, about 10,000 seconds. So our period between sunrise and sunset, which is our disturbance, is going to be half of that. So we're going to go halfway around the planet, the sun will rise, radiation will increase, we'll go halfway around the planet, we'll go behind it, and then the, the radiation will decrease as we go to the dark side of the planet. So here you can see um, as we hit sunrise, we actually got a response, um, and Bridget's going to talk about how much coolant we had to use, but we actually got it to maintain within a tenth of a degree, and as you can see, before about 400 seconds right here, we were able to return it to the set point. 
um, and it has similar behavior but inverse when the sun sets. Um, that's surface one on the top and uh, the second a plot right here is surface two so this is the surface that's near the engine and the first plot I've done without sunset because we noticed an interesting pattern first of all temperature two would actually decrease when coolant flow started uh, when coolant started flowing in surface one because that would that would cool the second surface as well um, the PID controllers would compensate for that but after a long time we had a gradual decrease in temperature uh, luckily for us it was so slow on this next plot sunset would happen long before that cooling would actually affect the, the spacecraft in a negative way. Um, now we wondered why that was, why would it keep cooling? And what we thought is that uh, one of the assumptions we made in our model was that the, the coolant was going to be a constant temperature. And so that coolant would actually do much better because we designed it to cool surfaces than it would to warm them back up. And so one of our limitations here that we noted is that uh, the coolant temperature, because it was constant, doesn't warm as well as it, coo uh, as well as it cools. So one of the improvements that we could make on the model if we were to do more work is that we would make the coolant temperature variable. Um, now this would require modeling the radiation of the coolant into space, which we didn't do. But if we did add that, this would become a more rigorous model and uh, I think we'd get better results. So as Ben said, we were able to um, accomplish our objective and we were successful in controlling the temperature within a tenth of a degree. Um, and you can see right here that was within 400 seconds, after 400 seconds. And our nominal flow rate was 60 liters per minute, um, but to reach the results on the previous slide, um, we used 15 liters per minute more than the nominal flow rate. And it was very successful um, in controlling the temperature. However, as we noticed um, and experimented, well, ran our system for orbiting Earth and Mercury or anywhere closer near to the Sun, um, we notice here that our temperature deviations at the current flow rates would be far greater and too large to sustain life on the spaceship. So in order to accommodate that, we would have to dramatically increase the flow rate of our coolant or somehow have a reduce the current coolant temperature. Um, and that would enable us to orbit planets near the Sun. Um, another thing we could do to improve accuracy is to use model predictive control as we assume the system was linear. Um, however, beyond our steady state bounds, um, it would obviously be nonlinear and the model predictive control would improve the accuracy of our system. So, any questions? <laughs>